So today we are going to finally give the tour of our Nordhaven 60. It is a highly customized Nordhaven 60. It has a full hydraulic package, top of the line electronics. It has two staircases that have been removed and the interior looks like a blend of the 63 and the 60. So we're gonna go head up to the flybridge with my dad and begin the tour. Welcome aboard Encore. We are off on a wild adventure to see and explore together, one anchorage, dive, and hike at a time, with the goal of living each and every day to its fullest. I'm Natalie, that's TJ, our pup Camo, and my dad and captain Mike. We spent last season on the East Coast and now it's time to head south. Make sure to join us as we cruise through the Caribbean on an adventure of a lifetime. Welcome to the Flybridge. Here we are at the uh, command center. The Flybridge has basically all the instruments you need to navigate, dock, or anchor the boat. We have a couple of Furuno monitors. We have a headlight right here. It's a four foot LED light bar which lights up your world. It's really cool to see lobster pots in Maine or if you're coming into a marina, it really lights up, not real far away, but just what you need to see. So again, on these two Furuno monitors, we can see where the, how we're navigating, where we're going. We can change our waypoints. It shows, gives us the water depth. It displays uh, wind speed and any of the other data we need. This is the Furuno autopilot, so we can uh, jog around things, uh, set different sea states, and uh, do whatever we need to do with the autopilot. We have a Furuno monitor, which will give us the wind speed, the water depth, anything we need along those lines. We have a fusion control for the speakers, for the sound system, change channels and whatnot. Got some nice surround sound. It's very important to have the right tunes up here. We can do our full anchoring here. We have the windless uh, anchoring system right here, and we have the hydraulic control, so we can select different pumps, uh, do whatever we need to with the hydraulics here. This is the main engine control here for forward reverse neutral. We have our hydraulic thrusters here. And these are, have a nice feature where they can actually be set part way over so I can come into the dock, put the thrusters over, hold it against the fenders, and I could actually theoretically go down and then put my lines on. Not done that, I always have competent crew, but you can do that. We have the horn up here. We have the fusion, uh, the fusion control for the speakers, and we have the main engine control here. In the, uh, and a couple of beer holders, one on each side here. In the front of the boat, the, the brow is what they, it's called, we have, well this is easier to see, but we have uh, a cabinet door on each side. I have my golf clubs, we have canvas in there, we have an intercom system. On the other side we have the fenders, lines, uh, all kinds of storage. Whatever you want to put up here, it's huge. And uh, we have a couple of stids, uh chairs up here. These are laid out a little bit differently. Usually a chair is right behind the wheel, but then you're kind of locked in, you're kind of tight, here you can stand back. And so with the wheel here and the chair is offset, you can stand back and you can actually, it looks like you're running over the dock. <laughs> it took some getting used to. People kept saying, go forward, go forward. And it really looks like you're running over the dock, but that's how the view is from up here. Yeah, it's quite bizarre. We do a lot of eating of up, uh, dinners up here and lunches. This is our nice, good view up here for our dinner time. Yeah, cocktail time, whatever. It's a ton of seating too, which is super nice. It's really cozy to have a nice breeze and just hang out up here on a windy day. And underway, this is, uh, you can sit back here. This is called the rumble seat. You get a little bit of the rumble from the exhaust, which is way up there. And uh, you can sit here and monitor everything and just enjoy your day. Lovely. Yeah, we also have a, this is our dry exhaust right here. So this is this big stack going up. And then the other thing that you changed was you added a, they painted this hardtop gray. Right, this is the first Nordhaven. They painted the uh, bottom of the hardtop. I've seen this on a lot of other boats. It looks really nice. So they did it on this. It breaks up the white so you don't get just a big seal white up here. And uh, that turned out nice. They liked it. They said they're going to do it again. And we have a couple of uh, ladders that will take you up to the top of the boat. Nice. Oh yeah, so let's head up to the top of the boat.
Camo, I don't think you can go up on this one. Okay. Okay. So this is the hard top. This is what it looks like. This is our tanning location. But uh, up here we have our fleur, floor? Fleer. Fleer, which is our night vision. We have another headlight over there. And then back over here we have our radars. Uh, we have our track vision, our KVH, two of these guys our wind speed and camera yeah the camera up there and this is what the uh the hard top on top of the boat looks like yeah that's up here let's head back down that was a good idea to film up there okay so fly bridge is done and we're gonna head down to the boat deck which should be a little bit less windy come on camo i guess he's gonna go next don't run me over come on There you go, Smoosh. <laughs> so down here, excuse our mess, we are provisioning for the Bahamas and getting ready to leave very soon. So we have a bunch of our toys stacked inside of here. We have hookahs and inflatable things and galore. But we do have our two tenders here. So go ahead on, we have our... This is a 13-foot Novarina with a 50-horsepower Yamaha. And we use this when we have to go longer distances. And then this is the new tender that we just got. We actually had a 17 foot twin V up here, which is just way too big. It to literally be. extended to like here. <laughs> yeah. It was just massive. You can't bring that thing to a dinghy dock. So instead I was really petitioning for this and it is, it is a 75 pound, 10 and a half foot Zodiac air floor, which has a three and a half horsepower engine on the back very lightweight. I by myself can drag it on shore or two people can pick it up and bring it ashore and I highly highly recommend for anybody that has the space on a bigger boat to get a lightweight inflatable air floor tender that you can bring on shore especially if you're going north to Maine there are 12 foot tides up there and you can't really anchor your boat out so light air floor tender is a a new must. And now we have space for a freezer too. Yeah so now we have a brand new Fridgy Bar freezer and then we have a, what's this, 30 gallons? It's a 30 gallon gas station. 30 gallon gas station back there, so we can go back there and we can open it up. And there's a hose in here, so we can. Just give it a yank, yep. Okay. Don't want to break it. So inside of here, we have our hose. And so right from here, we can take this and bring it over to either tender or any gas cans and fill up right from here so you aren't having to try to fill it up when it's bobbing down in the water. Which it's is... actually far enough that we've dropped that hose over the side into the water. We did do that one, <laughs> yeah, because we needed to refill and we don't want to... You don't have to pick up the tender. You can fill right from here and fill up the tender in the water. Yeah. And we also have our Rad Electric bike here. We've got a couple of folding bikes that usually sit up here too. And we have a 13-foot dual-person Hobie Cat. That's a pedal. So you, it's like walking. This will take you for miles and miles. <laughs> <laughs> and we also have, before we go to the back, we have our boarding ladder. So if you're at a fixed dock and you don't have boarding from down below, you put your boarding ladder out and it attaches right up here to the front uh, on the starboard side on the bow kind of in the walkway. And that's your boarding ladder. Making your way to the aft boat deck. And then we have our 1,500 pound Davit, hydraulic Davit. It's a wonderful device that'll pick up our either tender and it will launch off either side of the boat or they'll put either tender into the back of the boat. So it's easily, you can put the tender right in the water, go down, walk right off the swim platform and step right in your tender. It's really easy, really fun. And it'll pick up the uh, Hobie Cat also. The rails are removable up to about halfway up on the boat, so we can take the rails out. You don't have to get the tender as high in the air, and uh, that's a nice feature that they added. Yeah. yeah, it's great when it's like rocky and really wavy outside. You don't have to have as much clearance. And it's also nice for when we're here at a marina, if we want to launch a tender at a marina somewhere, we don't need to back the boat out of the slip to get the boat out. We can just pick it up, launch it right off the back, pop it in the water, and go adventure. And that... And one last thing oh. on the boat deck, you can't ignore the cleaning <laughs> supplies because you're always cleaning on a boat. So we have our cleaning supplies here. We have a bucket in here. We have our uh, cleaning supplies. So we have everything handy because you're always washing a boat when you have a boat. And we have our life raft and our EPIRP. And the EPIRP is what, what's gonna give us that rundown on that, Dad? Yeah, when the boat goes, uh, <clears throat> heaven forbids, but if the boat is sinking, this will actually deploy and it sends out a signal and they'll pick it up, the Coast Guard, and they'll tell them who we are, where we are, and they can send help. Nice. So we have that in the light preserver 
and they light uh, a fire extinguisher. And that is it for our flybridge and our boat deck, and now we'll head forward to the bow of the boat and go look at our ingering stuff. Come on, Camo! Come on! <laughs> <laughs> So on the, we are on the bow of the boat, and we are actually currently right now above my my and your bedroom, TJ. And we have our hatches right over here. And this is all of our anchoring. We have a 250 pound Rockna anchor. We have our windlass right here. We have our chain stopper, and we also have controls to raise and lower the anchor from up here, as well as our Freeman's, chain Freeman's hatch. So we can get in here, there's 400 feet, a half inch chain, and we can get in here quickly, and it, we have storage for our bridles. So it's a nice big chain locker, you don't have to worry about the chain getting all tangled, you can't get to it. It never is tangled, we've got plenty of space for it. As we go forward, we have our shore power. We have shore power connections on this boat at both the front and the back of the boat. So whether we back in or come in bow first, we can easily run our shore power cable to short distance. Nice. Yeah, so I guess we'll head down to the cockpit now. So as we head to the cockpit, this is another brow. There is also storage on both sides, as well as pump out for our black tank. And also we have a water spigot up here, which is super nice for hosing down the front of the boat. Come on, Camo, show us some down. Come on, Camo. <laughs> oh, you can't forget our nice little wing station. And we have something here known as a wing station. So when we're coming in to dock the boat, we have the main engine control here. We can go forward, reverse. We can start and stop in case there's a big emergency. We have our thruster controls and anchor controls. So we can do everything right from here, looking over the side of the boat, have good visibility. And this is a real nice wing station for docking. And then heading back, we do have awnings oh, over yeah, the these pilot are house great. doors. <laughs> these are awesome. And they, these allow you to open the pilot house doors when it's raining and still get a breeze through, and it keeps the sun off also. So these were a nice addition that uh, we use an awful lot. Yeah, and then right over here you can see too, this is where the, uh, the boarding door goes, the boarding ladder. So we're on a fixed commercial wharf dock, and uh, we need to get off. There's a ladder that goes here right to the dock. Nice. Whoa, Camo. And then we'll head on down to the cockpit. All right, Camo, take us down to the cockpit. Another thing worth noting is that on the Nordhaven 60s um, and other versions as well, there is only one walkway and stairwell on the outside of the boat. So we have our walkway on the starboard side. So you can access the, the boat deck and the bow of the boat and the cockpit from your starboard side. You don't have to go inside at all to go there. You can walk on the outside and arrive here. So Hi. yeah, so this boat, like I mentioned earlier, has two staircases removed. So there's one removed and it gives you... Instead of the rear staircase here, which would have knocked out the storage for a tender, I had to put in a wet locker so we can put our mops, hoses, brushes, buckets, fishing rod, any of that stuff right here. It's out of sight. And there's a drain and a vent in here, so that's our wet locker, which I just love. Yeah. So we have a nice, beautiful teak deck in here, teak furniture, and we just love the teak uh, soft down the teak. Yeah, we hang out a bunch back here, and this is nice to the table because it does fold down. We usually have it folded down and it's pushed out of the way a little bit more, so you have more deck space. And we have a nice counter over here, some storage drawers, storage cabinet, a sink, so you can wash your hands outside. And then down below we have the lazarette, which houses a ton of stuff, including the Gen 12 kilowatt the generator. Inverters, battery chargers, there's 10 D house batteries on this boat. The steering gear, the air conditioning system. Uh, lots of storage. Lots, lots more storage. <laughs> lots of spares. And that kind of covers the outside. And it is a hot day, so we are going to head inside before we all melt. Let's go to the salon. Time to head inside. Oh, there's a puppy dog in here. Hi, Camos. Oh, it's so much better in here. It's so hot out there. Yeah, the AC is wonderful. So we are in the salon, and this looks pretty similar to a lot of Nordhaven 60s, except for kind of this side. But over here we have the table, which seats about six probably when you include the benches that we have had made. So 
These in here are benches for the table to provide more seating and they also are storage. So we have our sheets in here that we actually use when we use this as a bed, which you and I, TJ, have done a lot underway. So these back cushions come off and then you have a really nice size bed here. Underneath, we have had some, okay, we eat a lot of food, so we need a lot of storage, <laughs> but we have three of these bins which are getting loaded up, which we just keep a lot of food supplies in, which is nice because then it's right in the kitchen, it's easy to get to. And it provides a lot of extra storage. A lot of extra storage because there's a lot of other storage behind these cushions and underneath these cushions. It's just harder to get to them all the time. So you see like we have all this storage back behind here, back behind the entire couch. But it's a little bit more work, so I really like these better. We also have storage, and this is added on. Um, my dad saw us on another Nord Hobbit and decided that we had to have it. So he extended the countertop over here, so it provides a bar for bar stool seating and a bunch of space for food. You can see that <laughs> we are loading up nicely for the Bahamas. Um, this will get even more filled with food. It's super easy to get to it when I'm in the kitchen cooking, and there are two of these. So there's one right next to it also. Push that back in. We'll go over here. This big thing is our U-Line refrigerator, called our drink fridge, but we have an ice maker inside of here, and it's a nice little fridge. This goes down to the engine room, and we will head there next, but for now, we're going to go to my most frequented room of the entire house and that is Natalie's kitchen the kitchen <laughs> um, we'll start up here we have a ton of great counter space on here uh, they, they're the same that if you've seen one Nordhaven you've seen one Nordhaven and I understand why they're all so different but on here we have a very large oversized sink kind of size sink that you'd see in a house typically which is amazing for cooking cleaning washing dishes all of that we have um, some cabinets in here. We have a spice rack. Have, Tell them about the amazing Berkey. This is an amazing thing. So this is our water purification system. We do have a water maker on board, but this is what we use. We don't use plastic water bottles. You don't need to be lugging them on board. You just take water from your sink, turn it on, put it in here. It filters the water and then it just comes out the tap right there. And it's wonderful tasting, amazing, easy, get one save the planet <laughs> and over here we have a four burner gas range below we have our electric oven which gets used quite a bit and this is nice because this is very much like a house size normal unit you can fit whatever you want to full size trays into the oven ton of nice counter space over here up ahead you have a lot of cabinets for plates bowls cups all of that is all up above and then as we move down, we have additional storage. So all of our pots and pans are underneath here. And this huge area is super deep. It goes back as far as the sink does. And then we have two refrigerator drawers over here. So really nice, deep refrigerator drawers. And we have a freezer drawer, two freezer drawers, and then a big Sub-Zero refrigerator. It's so, a big refrigerator. It's a big refrigerator. It's great. <laughs> I love this thing. It keeps food fresh for so long too, which is so nice. We have a little bit more pantry space because I know that you were concerned we wouldn't have enough space for our food, so don't worry. There's more. <laughs> Down in here, we have more food. <laughs> Your dad also put in all those lights that when you open the cabinets, it lights everything up, which is super nice. Yeah, so there's these little uh, lights he got, I think from Amazon, that they turn off and on when the cabinet opens so you can see what's inside. So now we will head further forward, and Dad, you can take it away for your bedroom. All right, this is the master stateroom. It's mid midship, they call it, so it's kind of more smooth than the forward stateroom. And it's a clean bed. There are drawers underneath. We have hanging lockers in here. This is uh, for the shirts, and that will hand, handle a lot of shirts. We have a full-size locker over here also, so pants and clothes and whatnot go in there. Your room is so organized compared to mine. Well, I have, uh, maybe a, a few less things. Two of you are sharing a room. On this TV, this will show the camera so I can see anything going on in the boat. Also, it shows um, anchor watch. I can wake up in the middle of the night, which I often do, and I can check and see if the boat's dragged off anchor. Underway, if I'm sleeping and you, 
or running the boat, I can make sure we're on course. So <laughs> make sure I haven't fallen asleep. Uh, right, exactly. So that keeps uh, an eye on that. And then feel free, I'm not going to go in the bathroom with you there, but uh, we have a shower. So here is his big stand-up shower. It's got some very nice seating in there. Let me flip around. Great big counter space, great sink, and a freshwater toilet that is electric. We'll get back out of here. Oh, right. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so, because, so here is where this kind of changes configurations. Well, I guess the master does too. So this is where the 60 and the 63 start to blend together. There is a hallway here. So the normal standard 60 has the master and has a really large bathroom with a tub a lot of times. And that's why there is no hallway here. This is the bathroom. Instead, there's a hallway here, which then allows for a ton of space for a closet. So this is like crazy on a boat this size or any boat to have a huge, huge storage closet. So we have a bunch of our cleaning supplies and coats and things like that inside of here. Then we walk down the hallway to our bedroom, go over Mr. Camo Dog, and we head forward into this room, which I love because it's just so nice and light and bright in here. We have our bed over here, which is also a queen size bed. We have five porthole windows in here, as well as three hatches. So it is just like being in a sunroom, and I absolutely love it. And all of these clothes, too. So they darken and all of those have covers over top of them as well. So you can make it dark if you want to. And there's a great amount of storage. This whole thing up here all has super deep cabinets in here. There's a lot of space to wow. keep clothes. Yours looks so nice too. I may have cleaned it up for this. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> it may have not looked this You want to see before. mine? Should we show them mine? <laughs> no, one, no, no one wants to see that. Okay. But we have, um, this is where Camo sleeps and all those little animals. And there's also additional storage down here, these huge drawers and my big bathing suit drawer. And so we, I mean, there's really a ton, a ton of space. in. Oh yeah, this boat. whole bed comes up. Oh yeah, underneath this bed and my dad's bed is storage as well. So we have bags of comforters and pillows and dog food and just extra supplies down underneath the bed there. As we head out of the room, also if you back up, I can pull this carpet up to show you our pump room. So down below here, just pick up the carpet, pick up the hatch. Wow, who would have known that was there? This is our secret stowaway compartment. Okay, we're gonna go ahead down to the pump room. The hidden room. The hidden room. So down here, we have a lot of important things for the boat. We have our Dometic Sea Exchange water maker, which has been upgraded with two membranes. So now it makes 60 gallons of water an hour, which is amazing. We also have our 40 gallon hot water tank. And there is also two freshwater headhunter pumps down here. One's the main and one is the standby. We also have a lot of storage and things like that. That's kind of the main big pieces of equipment that we have down here in our pump room. So we'll head up. Watch your head. I'm little, I got this. <laughs> Closes nice and easy. We have carpet made, so there's really nice, beautiful wood floor below. Just for a homier feel. Oh, definitely. We got carpet on the boat. So we'll head into our bathroom. So in here, it's actually a really nice size for a boat. We have um, hanging stuff for our towels. We have a toilet again. We have a great sized uh, counter in here. And again, this bathroom is in this location because this master bathroom got moved and the hallway is here. So there could be a bath in here too, right? Yeah, the original 63 has like a big, huge bath. It's a huge, huge bathroom. It has a big, huge bathtub on it. So just decided it wasn't necessary and we have this instead now. And we have a medicine cabinet mirror in here for a lot of storage, which is great. And I mean, this shower in here is so big. It is a wonderfully big, huge shower that feels like you're showering in a house, and it's great. Okay, well that is the lower area, so now we will head upstairs to the pilot house. Follow you. Okay, watch out for the dog. <laughs> and then also on Encore, our staircases are a little bit different than the Norhaven 60s because there is the change in the configuration for the hallway. We have these two spiral staircases that overlap each other, which is a great saver of space. So we'll head up this way. So 
So up here we have the captain's quarters, which is a our third queen size bed on the boat. And it has a nice storage area inside of here, which we will be putting food inside of. <laughs> and it has storage there and then underneath the bed as well. And they have their own bathroom in here. So on your left, you have a shower, you have a toilet right ahead of you, and then on your right, you have a sink. Beautiful shower window. Yeah, it's nice. It really is like such great shower views. This is where the dry exhaust goes upstairs. So this bathroom's a little bit smaller than the ones that have a wet exhaust, but this is our staff that goes upstairs. So that's just what it is. And then, so here is our nice, big, beautiful, bright pilot house. So we mentioned that there was two staircases removed. Because the second staircase was removed, we have a very, very large pilot house. So typically in the North Haven 60s, there's a staircase that is right over here where you're standing at, which provides access to the front bedroom, which is our bedroom. But because of that reconfiguration, there is no staircase here. So we have a really, really big helm. There is a lot going on up here, but we'll start up at the top. So we have our gray and black holding tanks. We have our monitor for our generator, it tells us what our generator is at, as well as our water maker. This is our 12 kW generator, our wing engine display. We have our hailers. We have two VHF radios. It's always good to have two on a boat in case one breaks. So we have two of those. We have our AIS. These are our wind direction, wind speed, things like that. We have a satellite compass here, as well as a compass there as well. This is our information on the main engine on the boat. And the main engine is a, what, 325? 325 John Deere. 325 John Deere. And the wing engine is a... 100 horsepower John Deere. 100 horsepower John Deere. With a gory prop. With a gory prop, folding prop. Yep, that's nice. And then this is our controls for the 20 kW generator. There are, this is our bilge pump control. There are five bilge pumps on board Encore. And what are these for, Dad? Do you nope. want to pop in for that? Sure. <laughs> That's the our, end of my capabilities. <laughs> we have our uh, fire system controls here, and we have a, uh, there's an electrical system with the batteries. We have a uh, warning there, and we have wing engine over temperature. Okay, so on this side, we have our DC circuit breakers, and there's a whole raft of them here. On this boat, it's nice, they're separated because on this side, we have the AC circuit breakers, and again, there's as many over there. We have our three Hattieland monitors, fully dimmable. Those are beautiful devices. And across here, we have our horn, and we have our Maxwell anchoring, the main engine controls. We have our radar controls here. We have our thruster controls here, and we have our hydraulic track link ABT system. We have our Simrad, we have a forward-facing sonar, which is kind of cool, and tells you if we're going to run into something. And we have our satellite phone and our intercom system. To the far left is the controls for the wing engine. Okay. And that kind of covers what we have right here. So over here on the AC side, actually both sides look like this. It is beautifully, beautifully laid out. I'll let you crawl in there. And just all the wires are so meticulously laid and put together it's very very easy to find it's very it's spacious in here too yeah so that covers it for all of our electronics on board and all of our systems uh the rest of the pilot house is a lot of counter space and sitting space we have a lot of space here to lay out our charts we're trying to look at charts uh, a lot of storage underneath here for those it's also a nice table up here that we sit at a lot when we're underway, having our meals and just hanging out up here. There's also storage behind these cushions and underneath these cushions, so more storage. And now we will head all the way downstairs, down two flights of stairs, down to the engine room. Pass down through the kitchen, by the salon, and we head down this way. So we are heading down to the lower level berth and engine room. Along the way, we have some more cabinets with some more storage. And this staircase is a little bit different than other Nordhaven 60s that we kind of mentioned because we have the two spiral staircases on top of each other. So there is a fourth berth down here because my dad, the engineer, decided to uh, look at the drawings and move the water tanks three feet forward. 
So by doing that, it allows for an additional bed, which is great when you have friends or guests coming aboard. We also are going to be using it for our food storage as we stock up. And there's a nice curtain that we put on here so that people have their privacy. It's like a nice room. Over here, we have a washer and a dryer. These are ASCO. So we have a washer here and this is our dryer. They are wonderful. They're a great size. You can do really decent sized loads. We wash our comforter inside of them. So this gives you a good idea for the capability of these. And they stow away very nicely. And another nice thing is all of the cabinets and drawers on the entire boat have these pop handles. So when you're underway, you can close them and it locks them closed. So that's how we keep things secure underway, not keeping so that we don't have cabinets and drawers just flying open. Down below the washer and dryer, we have six very, very deep, huge drawers that we keep a lot of supplies and a lot of band-aids and first aid kits. Over here, we have our freezer. It has some additional space inside of there. And then inside of this compact this compartment. In here we have our KVH satellite and more storage, which is a great amount of space. Have a nice little sink and then we go into the engine room, which will definitely be my dad's specialty and not mine. <laughs> All right, so going forward, we have... <clears throat> Look at that a, headroom. A pretty white engine room. So we have two John Deere engines. The main John Deere engine is this one. It's a 325 horsepower engine. We have a what they call a wing engine at the back that's a 100 horsepower John Deere engine and that's connected to a gory folding prop. So underway the prop folds down, it's not a big drag. We also have down here a big hydraulic system. Here's the reservoir here. The valves uh, are over here, the manifolds, a lot of hoses down here. <laughs> we have... These read your fuel. These, yeah, we have a, a, a fuel system here. These are the main filters for the engines and uh, it gives gauges so you can uh, switch over when they get uh, start to get dirty. Below them is the transfer manifolds. We have four main fuel tanks on this boat and we can switch over from one tank to the next. We can balance the loads. We can take fuel from one, polish it, put it into another. And uh, we have a complete system there to do that. And you wanna make sure you turn the right valve at the right time. So we do have a, hydro a hydraulic manifold on the wall there to show you what, what you're doing. There's a day tank and this actually feeds to the main engine or the, yeah, to the main engine. There's another fuel tank in the back by the wing engine that just supplies fuel to the wing engine and they do that for safety reasons. Making, making our way to the back side of the engine room towards the lazarette. We have our 20 kW generator here. So in case we want to run the AC, washer, dryer, oven, we can just pretty much load this thing up. It'll, it'll run just about everything. And uh, again, back here we have storage on either side. We have a separate fuel tank for the wing engine, as I'd mentioned. And down below there's the shaft, the uh, dripless system, the bilge, and uh, fire system. And that's pretty much it. So this system's, uh, this is the heart of the boat that keeps it moving and uh, it's been doing a wonderful job. Hi, Camo. So that concludes our North Haven 60 boat tour. It is definitely a very different North Haven than a lot of the other 60s that are out there, but we love it. It's perfect. My dad did a killer job making all the changes that he made and North Haven did a wonderful job building this boat. We hope you enjoyed touring our home with us today and make sure to go subscribe and follow along on our journey as we cruise around through the Caribbean.